Hi, this is Joseph. It is January 14th. So it's Thursday. We're trading during the New York session. I wanted to put together this video for you just to show you a couple of different trades, two trades specifically. Now these opportunities set up, uh, there was one on the uh, Australian dollar and uh, there was a trade on the dollar Canadian. Uh, I'm just going to show you two trades on the majors uh, because primarily I think most people are trading either the euro dollar or the pound dollar or both of them. And uh, I want to show you how important point and figure is to me. <laughs> so I, again, I don't mean any disrespect for those of you who really don't care about it. You just want to learn about volume or something like that, or you're going to you know, continue to use the, the charts the way you do. I'm not trying to change anybody's minds uh, because, you know, making an adjustment to a new trading system or to look at a different type of chart, um, I know that that can slow you down because I did that in the beginning of my trading career. I was trying a lot of different strategies and I couldn't stick to one. So it was kind of like that shiny object syndrome. And I don't want to confuse anybody, but I just, you know, it, it's my mission to make sure that everybody knows <laughs> here in the group that uh, I strongly recommend if you get the chance to start applying and introducing point and figure into your trading, you're going to see a dramatic difference. And it doesn't mean that you have to stop using certain indicators. Um, you know, some people like using Fibonacci tools. There's nothing wrong. I use Fibonacci tools in different ways. Uh, I used to use Fibonacci, the Fibonacci tool exclusively as a way to try to gauge my take profit levels. And it didn't always work for me. But when I started using point and figure, that worked almost every single time I did it correctly. And it was amazing. The, the, it was just like so transformational. It was just eye-opening. Um, I get a different sense of uh, my, I remember my experience when I first started using point and figure. It was just a different sense of um, confidence. And, and I, want to sh I want you to experience that too because if you are struggling and you're going between different time frames and you're using different indicators or you've got your favorite indicators, again, you don't have to change those indicators. Primarily, at this point in my trading career, I really don't rely too much on indicators. You do see in the membership course, I have uh, bonus sections in the membership course. And, it, and those bonus sections are uh, trading strategies that I developed back in 2001 and 2002 when I first started trading. And uh, they were very technical, and I did incorporate some indicators like the CCI and the MACD and the Bollinger Bands. I used to be a big fan of Bollinger, and I still have Bollinger Bands on some of my charts. But again, I use those as a way for me to scan through the charts and to identify something that might be taking place where I would sit up at that point and then pay attention. But I do not use the indicators as a form of getting into the trade itself. I rely on point and figure. My point and figure, if again, I've been doing this for 20 years, and when I look at the data, all of my trades, point and figure has increased my profits and my profitability hands down. There's no question that, uh, I mean, I, I don't even know, uh, many of you have heard my story. When I first started trading, I lost, I was down a lot of money in the first year or two. And I didn't know how I was going to get that money back. And it certainly wasn't going to, uh, you know, I wasn't going to be able to get the opportunity to earn it back by just using some, a few little easy indicators at the bottom of my chart and maybe some candlestick patterns. That wasn't working out for me. And I dedicated a lot of my time to try to study different types of candlestick charts, uh, patterns on the charts. Uh, indicators. I studied a great deal of, uh, I spent a lot of time studying some of the indicators that I was using to make sure I wasn't using, you see sometimes people will put too many indicators on one chart and sometimes they're using the same type of indicator. They don't even know that there's a difference. And um, so I studied, I spent a lot of time and it still wasn't working and nothing changed for me dramatically. I, I didn't improve my performance and I didn't improve my profitability until I started to apply supply and demand, why coffee and principles and point and figure. So what we're looking at right now is point uh, the uh, pound dollar. I appreciate uh, you letting me go on <laughs> talking about this all the time. I know you're probably going to hear it all the time. You might be sick of it. But uh, again, you don't have to stop using the indicators that you're using right now because we do use, and I, 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 I recommend and I teach in my trading course how to set up your charts where you're looking at, let's say, a candlestick chart on the left-hand side, and then your point and figure is going to give you your confirmation on the right-hand side. Point and figure gives me my entry. It tells me where critical levels of support and resistance are. It tells me when I should get into a trade, and it also tells me how long to hold on to a trade. Those were the primary issues that I was dealing with when I first started trading. Those are the questions that were always going through my head. When do I get into a trade? Like, what if I'm scalping for the day? What if I'm using a five-minute chart? What if I'm using a 30-minute chart? What if it's not working? What if the market isn't reacting and isn't moving in a certain way? that particular day so that I could use those time frames because sometimes the market's reacting to a different time frame and you have to be sensitive to that. And the sensitivity isn't as um, 
important if you rely on point and figure for your key entries. So the point and figure, again, is, is only going to give me an entry when there's some kind of change in volatility. The point and figure is not based on time. So you'll notice that these columns, they're not, it's not like you're looking at a 30 minute column or a 15 minute column or a one hour column. It's nothing like that. There is no change in these columns where you would see another X in an uptrend or a zero in a downtrend. There is no change until there is a change in volatility and there has to be more momentum and more movement and more participation behind that move. The other issue again is how long do you hold on to these trades? Everybody's looking for trades or most of us are looking for trades that are going to be let's say a two for one reward to risk ratio or uh, you know three for one. How do you calculate that? Because Fibonacci uh, tool was not always giving me that information but point and figure does. If you use your point and figure charts correctly and you have them constructed appropriately for the currency or the commodity or the stock or the indice that you're trading, it's going to give you accurate results just like this. So it's important. I spend, I have a whole module on how to set up your point and figure charts for each different type of market that you can apply this to. This morning, uh, we had a breakout here with an entry of 1.3656. We had a first target at 1.3684 and then a second target at one, um, sorry, the 1.3700 level. Now, you might remember the 1.3700 level because that came into play earlier this week. We had a trade that paid uh, just about 200 pips on this move to the uh, over here on the far left where I'm moving my cursor, and it ran right into the 3700 level. Actually, it went up to 3701, and today it did it again. So what it's doing here is it's running into this daily resistance level. So I'm going to calculate this and trade this very carefully because I'm using the point and figure and the data here. There's different areas that I use to calculate my take profit levels. Um, it's very easy to use the wrong levels if you're not experienced and you don't know how to count the figure out the count. So we refer to it sometimes as fuel in the tank. How far is price likely to go? Well, again, we have to step back and take a look at the bigger picture. And we have to realize that price is running into this area of resistance again, the 1.3700, like it did earlier this week. And if we look at the daily time frame, which I'm going to show you in just a moment, you can see that that's happening again. So to hold on indefinitely or to hold on to this trade too long, you could give back your profits. You have to step back and take a look at what's going on on the bigger time frame. But using the, the appropriate area for your count is going to give you the right take profit level so you're not holding on to the trade too long where you end up giving back all your profits. Notice how when we get out of these trades and these take profit levels, they occur just at or about the tops or the bottoms of these trades when we get into these trades. And and sometimes it'll move a little bit further, but if the trend's going to continue and it's going to be a big, strong, massive move, we're going to get a second entry opportunity and it's going to appear somewhere. So in other words, if we're trading this from 3656, to 3700. We've got two counts here. We're going to scale out at the first one. We always want to scale out uh, because we can't assume and take anything for granted. We, we have to assume that the first target, it once it's hit, you have to lock in profits because sometimes that second target won't, it, it won't hit the second target. So you got to protect yourself. Uh, there's no point in giving back profits here. From 56 to 84 is still a decent trade, but it went from 56 to the double zero. So if, if it reaches this area, and we know that this is on the daily time frame, we know that it's running into this area of resistance from a few days ago, we're going to wait at this point, take our profits. This is a trade based on the information that we see right here. So this trade, in my opinion, is done. We're done with this trade. It's over. We've achieved our objective here. And at this point, if price was going to close above that high, that daily high, well, I would know that later in the day, right? I would know that after the rollover period. And at that point, I could look at the daily time frames, and then I would start to set up my charts, and I would see an area of consolidation that would look similar to this, and then it would give me another breakout to the upside, and I could trade it again, and I would use a larger count with more data. So that's how we're going to effectively find other areas, uh, additional areas in a continued uptrend or downtrend. So Let's go ahead and review what, what took place here. This trade right here paid approximately 42 pips. So it wasn't a bad trade. It was a decent little trade. But again, we couldn't expect much. You, you've seen uh, other trades here. If we go back over here, 
This one paid 169 pips to the first target and 200 pips to the second target. And this was earlier in the week. So this isn't the same trading environment. It's not doing the same thing because we started down at a base. It bounced off of support and we knew where the next level of resistance was. Today's a little bit different. Today's trading in a different trading range. Let's take a look at the daily time frame here. So this is a daily time frame pound futures. And you can see here, if you watch some of the videos that are posted in the Facebook group, uh, I did a full... Uh, review uh, a, a full breakdown on how we traded this low here earlier in the week to the upside this is the one that traded uh, uh, paid approximately 200 pips to the upside and a uh, perfect point and figure entry the count was extremely accurate that's why we were able to hold on to the trade and earn well over again the first target was 169 pips and the final target was for uh, just a, a slightly over 200 pips so it's very very accurate when you're using point and figure but you can see here on the daily time frame what what's actually taking place here support well that candle right here from, I'm sorry, that bar from the 11th of January, it, it just couldn't close below that support level. It bounced and pulled right back up, closed above the 50% mark. And now we're seeing price run into this area of resistance again. Second day in a row, it continues to run into this area of resistance and continues to pull away from it. So these are signals. These are turning points. These are classic opportunities for us to sit up and pay attention to either some possible reversal or it tells us that we should probably close out our trade and we're done with the trade as it's running into this area of resistance and we see that it's just not going any further that's what led to this trade and this move right here so again 42 pips on this one here relatively small trade uh, very often we can get into trades intraday trades on the pound dollar that could pay you know basically uh, anywhere from 40 to maybe 70 80 pips I'm not going to say that it's guaranteed every single time to be 40 pips it could be 30 pips it could be 50 60 pips every time it's going to be a little bit different as you can see that it's a different trading environment altogether what we're trading here over the last 24 hours or so uh, versus what we traded earlier in the week down here uh, this was the setup you can see here was the bounce off of support that I showed you on the daily time frame and then it just it rallied all the way straight through into the 3700 level so it is a different trading environment that's the first thing you have to be aware of is it's it's not the same it's, it's not the same condition so it's not going to produce the same amount of profits you, you already know that, though. I mean, if you've been trading for a while, you're already aware of these ideas. So this one gives us a certain count. So I talk about this quite a bit. With point and figure, you want to have a minimum count, a conservative count, which is usually the first target. And then we have the overall larger count, which would be our second target. Now, again, this is constructed, this point and figure chart is constructed so that I can day trade. It's a slower day trade, meaning that it's not as quick as like, let's say, trying to jump in and out and scalp on a five minute. It's nothing like that. It more or less resembles a, a one hour time frame. So it's slowing things down quite a bit for me. But I can adjust this this chart, this point and figure to a four hour chart. So if you're working full time, you want to slow things down, you get the same basic setups and the patterns are going to appear very, very similar just slowed it's all going to be slowed down for you and you can then have you you have much more uh time to get into a trade and to identify a trade to confirm the trade and then wait for the trade to just slowly reach its take profit target you know if it's a larger time frame it may take a little while uh, not in every instance there could be some kind of reaction that could be let's say a brexit comment or you know some kind of uh, economic data report that could just drive price within 30 minutes straight to that target for like 70 80 90 pips profit it happens i've got lots of videos on the membership course uh, the the videos that I'm talking about in the membership course are in the module. It's titled Live Coaching Call Replays. It's the very last module in the online membership course. And in that, it, it's actually a breakdown of some of the videos that I've made uh, during live coaching calls on Wednesday. I post those in the group and we dissect and we analyze all of the trades and why and how I developed the count, where, what I used, what columns, um, you know, how I was able to find these targets and uh, and the entry points the entry points are relatively easy I've got a module that explains how I'm trading double and triple tops and double and triple bottoms uh, there's also a more advanced uh, uh, entries uh, we also trade catapults and semi catapults I explain how to do it and and again you know if you're not used to using a point and figure chart I get it I remember the first time I looked at a point and figure chart it looked kind of strange to me and I didn't want to look at it again but I realized that if the greatest traders in history are using point and figure and they've been using it for the last hundred years, even without computers, then there's got to be something going on there. I remember thinking that. And uh, 
I, I just dedicated myself to, to understanding market structure. You hear a lot of people talk about market structure, but they can't really explain it. And then you hear people talk about supply and demand, and they can't usually explain it. Some people do, pretty good, uh, do a pretty good job at it. They understand it, and they can see it on the charts. Other people can't. And when you cannot... I recommend, again, this is why I, I keep hammering on this, you know, you should try point and figure. Point and figure is going to clear all of that up for you. There's no guessing with point and figure. Again, I don't get an entry until something happens. It's not like I'm looking at a little area of resistance and then I'm looking at a candlestick chart where there's a little wick that pokes through the resistance and you think, okay, this is it. This is what I used to think. I used to think, this is it. It's going to break out. I got to jump in right now. And then it would move up a little bit and then come back down inside of consolidation and I'd get stopped out. Well, that's not likely to happen. There isn't a change here. There isn't an opportunity. There's no reason for me to consider getting into the trade until I actually get my signal. So we take this data that we see here. If I go back over here to the one hour time frame, uh, this is the same. This is the pound. Uh, let's go to the one hour chart. You can see what we were doing here. This is a little bit different. So over the last 24 hours or so, you can see that it formed a base, this support level. And then there was this spike high right there, and it pulled back down one more time and tested this area. And you can see with volume. Now, I have uh, I spent a lot of time in my coaching course talking about volume, how and when to use it, because it can be relatively tricky. Uh, this last or, or bottom indicator down here is actually a custom indicator that brings my attention to certain areas. So if we go back over here, we can see that, that one spike right there in the middle of that consolidation phase and then it pulls back down to test one more time and then we get this area of resistance and then it breaks out to the upside creates another little level of resistance this was still inside of this range of consolidation so i really wasn't too comfortable with trading this opportunity here it did work looking back in hindsight but i'm much more conservative than that i want to take the right trades and i want to trade when price is likely to move and start its uh it's almost like when they talk about getting into like a, a fast moving river or a stream you jump in and you kind of, even if you're on a raft or an inner tube, right? You're down at the Colorado River and you're you're riding the uh, a raft down. It, it sometimes it's pretty fast and it's pretty fun. Uh, it's cold, but it, it's a lot of fun. But you're looking for trade opportunities that are like that, where you just get caught up in the mo momentum and the movement, and that's what point and figure usually does. Sometimes there's going to be additional retracements. I'm not going to guarantee that every time you get into a trade with point and figure, it's going to rally just like this. It doesn't. But if there is retracements and pull, pullbacks, those retracements and pullbacks are usually tests and they confirm that I'm trading in the right direction anyway. I teach you exactly how to do that in the coaching co course so that you're not freaked out about it and you don't close out the trade because these tests are healthy. They do confirm that we're trading it in the right direction. The tests are the what we would refer to as the concept of smart money testing prior to the breakout. But again, when I wait for the right location, I'm getting into a trade and very often this is what ends up happening. I get into these fast moving trades and they rally and they move right to my take profit levels. Within 20, 30 minutes, sometimes an hour and a half, it really depends. Some days it's gonna be a little bit slower and other days it's even gonna be faster than this and it's gonna cover a greater distance. The key here is that, again, I'm not guessing with point and figure. I'm not guessing. I was always guessing when I was using Fibonacci tools. I was always guessing when I was using certain indicators and even the CCI, even the MACD, even the Bollinger Bands. I was still sometimes guessing. And it's really important that you understand the structure of consolidation or areas of accumulation and distribution, the development of those processes and the phases, because the phases of those areas of uh, consolidation will also help you determine when it's safe to get in. This was phase C going into phase D and it was an opportunity for me to get into the trade rather than phase A or phase B. Phase A is just obviously the stopping action, whether it's to the upside or to the downside. Phase B is the formation and the filling out of that and the creation of that consolidation phase and the testing. So I stay away from trading inside of phase B. You'll notice that there was a few pokes uh, where price poked up uh, through resistance here. And it dropped right, right back down again. So sometimes people will look at it and go, well, I can see other areas where you would get some signals. Why didn't you take those? Again, it was because of the phase. So by analyzing and understanding how to quantify these phases of consolidation, I know when to stay away from these little head fakes, these little moves. Ultimately, they ended up paying off. But it's really frustrating when you get into a trade to get in and you're thinking, okay, well, why doesn't it move as fast or you know, here at this location, the way it did when it finally broke out and hit the targets. Again, it was because of the development of that phase. We talk about this with uh, Wyckoffian principles and, and to understand what is what are the mechanics behind why it takes so long for price to really gather up enough momentum so it can blast out of this range of consolidation. And that's what the phases help me identify. I teach 
how to do that in my online course so that you're not jumping in inside of phase uh, B, uh, where you would get chew normally chewed up and chopped up and you grind away at your account and you're, you know, trading all these little candlestick patterns. I used to do that and it used to frustrate me and I was losing a lot of money as a result of that. Again, you can see just how clear it is. So the other trade here that I wanted to show you, basically the same setup. This was the Euro dollar, basically the same thing. Again, we have to be paying attention to the fact that uh, what kind of trading range are we trading in? Can we expect a big, massive move, or is it running into other areas of resistance or support? In this case, like the pound that I showed you just a moment ago, it was running into resistance. We could see that. It was very, very clear, even on the daily time frame. So just simply going from whatever time frame you trade to and then go up to the daily just to double check to see you know, where it's running into, how close is it to a key or critical level of support or resistance. That'll give you a clear idea. Sometimes it's not going to have an impact for the day. Sometimes you're way, you're way far away. You're, you're, what you're looking at, where price is, it's way far away from support and resistance and you don't need to worry about it. Um, other times, again, it can have an impact. And here you can see with the euro dollar, we had specific targets. Euro dollar gave us an entry at 1.2127. That was the break. You can clearly see this area of resistance right here. This is like a picture perfect. This is one of the trades that I talk about quite a bit. In the uh, uh, second module of the trading course, this is one of the strategies that I love and I, I, I get all of my coaching students to start executing this one right here because it's so perfect. It's so easy to identify. It doesn't set up every day, but when it sets up, it's perfect. It works just like this. And you can see how and when price is likely to start accelerating and moving and taking off like just like this. So the first target was 60. The second target was 80, which is a psychological level. And it only went up as high as I believe 78 half on this one. So 78 half, it didn't hit the final target there. Either way, we always lock in profits at the first target. Remember, that's that conservative or minimum count. That's the first count based on the point and figure data. And then if it continues further, then we have a second count based on the point and figure data. But we always want to lock in profits at the first because we don't want to give anything back. We would lock in profits at the first target and then set it at a break-even stop. Uh, you know, sometimes I, I recommend this and I say this every once in a while. If it's running into a clear, a clear level like this of resistance, that's the other thing that I want to point out is that point and figure shows me where these critical levels of resistance and support are. There's no guessing. So again, if I was to look at a candlestick pattern, there might be you know one uh, candlestick body uh, candle here, and then maybe a few wicks poking through, and then I'd start moving my resistance level above the highs of the wicks, and it would sort of change all of this. But you can see that this is clearly a solidified level of resistance. There's no mistaking. Again, if you set up your point and figure charts correctly, this is what point and figure is going to help you do. That's why I keep hammering on this idea of using point and figure. Again, I'm not telling you to change uh, you know, any indicators because that could confuse you initially. Uh, I recommend continuing to use the indicators that you use. Just remember, when you're setting up your charts like this, and if you're going to consider using this program, you're going to be using point and figure on the right-hand side to calculate your targets and your entries. But on the left-hand side, you're going to do all of your technical work on the, on the bar chart or the candlestick chart with the indicators that you like, and you have to learn the phases. That's the one thing that you're going to incorporate in my coaching program is the phases. The, 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 uh, you can see just how important it was on that pound dollar trade to identify the phase prior to the breakout. Some days there isn't enough time. If I went to a smaller time frame on this one, then I'd be able to see the phases and I could go to a five minute bar chart on the left of the euro dollar and it would be a little different here. There'd be more data and there'd be more information for me to calculate, but this was perfect. This was one of those picture perfect trade opportunities that that I teach how to use uh, for intraday trades on the uh uh, point and figure chart. And again, you can slow all of this down. This could mimic a four hour time frame. would have been the same thing for the most part if it was the same kind of signal. I'm not saying that today would have reacted the same way. What I'm saying is, is that you can change the settings on the point and figure to uh, support the amount of time that you have to trade. So let's say, you know, again, you're working, you're working full time, but you only have, you can only have maybe an hour or two in the evening or maybe even less than that to set up your charts and to review. Well, then you're going to be looking at probably a four hour, maybe a daily time frame, and then you would set up your uh, point and figure to resemble that, uh, that time frame that you're executing and looking and uh, doing all your technical work over here on the left-hand side. So what I mean by that, when I'm talking about the left-hand side, uh, it would look something like this. So if I go over here, um, you'll see as I bring this up, this is going to bring the pound dollar. So you can see the pound dollar. I got the pound dollar on the right-hand side, uh, point and figure, and then I've got the pound dollar on the left-hand side. Right now it's set on the uh, daily time frame, but I would switch this, uh, the time frame, 
So I would switch this to a 60 minute or a 30 minute or a five minute bar chart. And then again, I would do all of my work here. And again, I recommend don't, don't, you know, start eliminating the use of some of the indicators that you already currently are using. If you're comfortable with those and they get you some of the results and they help you confirm what you need to see, continue to use them. We're not talking about, you know, eliminating all indicators. It's just the way that I trade. I really don't rely too much. You'll find that over time, when you're using a method like this and you're able to identify the phases of consolidation, those are the key critical components of price action, supply and demand anyway. Uh, and to uh, identify the, the footprint of smart money as it's getting into the markets and then preparing for their campaign, whether it's a markup phase or a markdown phase. Either way, those are the two primary uh, components. Phase analysis of accumulation and distribution, which is consolidation, and then but the entry with point and figure and calculating your targets. The rest of the work, again, over here on the left-hand side, whether you use a bar chart or candlestick chart, you might want to continue to use some of the indicators that you use. Uh, but again, like I said, you're, over time, you're going to find that you're going to end up relying on those indicators less and less. And that's what's happened to me over the course of the last 20 years. I rely less and less on indicators. The only thing that I really rely on as far as an indicator is the uh, volume clip. Uh, and, and I spent a great deal of time talking about that. This is a, a review for those of you who've already seen this chart here. I've shown this chart so many times in the uh, Facebook group and, and also in the uh, uh, private coaching course, uh, we, we keep going back to this one because it's going to give us a really good opportunity here shortly. And uh, I'm pretty excited about the, the move that's likely to develop here on the uh, pound dollar. Shortly, I didn't mean today. I don't mean like in the next couple of hours. We're looking at a daily time frame. But again, it is sizing up for another opportunity here, and we want to be prepared for that. But uh, again, thank you very much for listening. I appreciate it. If you've got any questions, don't, don't hesitate to ask. You know, I posted in the Facebook group. I remember when I first started trading... Uh, you know, there weren't, I used to reach out to some people on, on, on their websites and I wouldn't hear from them. And I knew that they didn't have the time. They didn't care. You know, if I wasn't buying their program, they weren't going to give me any other attention. I get it. Uh, you know, and everybody's got important things to do. But if you, if you have a question, it's really bothering you. If it's a, you know, a, a, you know, a moment where you're deciding to make a decision about getting into a trade or not, and, and you want, you know, just a, another opinion, send me a private message in the Facebook group. And uh, or in Facebook, and I'd be more than happy to, you know, if I can answer with a quick text, or I would make a short video walking you through my analysis. At least I'll show you my point of view and my perspective. And you know, whether you use it or not, that's totally up to you. My way is not the only way to trade. It's just the only way that I trade, and it's the only thing that works for me. And that's why I'm sharing these uh, these tools. I know that these tools, uh, phase analysis, white coffee and principles, and point and figure work. They work for everybody who uses them correctly. Uh, the interesting thing, and I say this quite a bit, is that when my coaching students set up their charts and they know how to use point and figure, we all get the same entries. That's really um, fascinating to me. I, I realized that was happening uh, over and over and over again. And, and my coaching students, all the people that go through my coaching program, they get my uh, cell phone number so they can send me a text. And unless I'm sleeping, uh, you know, I get text messages and they'll say, hey, Joseph, I saw this trade here on the pound dollar. What do you think? And I got that message this morning on the pound dollar. I also got the message a couple of times on the euro dollar. Uh, is this confirmed on a, a point figure? Do you think it's good? And I just reply, yes, I'm taking it too. That's it. And then they know I'm doing it. And we all get the same entry if you've set up your charts correctly. So it's really interesting. That's why I say there's no guessing. Everybody can see the same thing if you set it up correctly. Thanks for watching.